So, people want to claim that most of the men in Tuca and Birdie are trash. So let's grade every single one of them and see how true that is. This whole stigma has been painted on the show as something that is heavily against men in general, showing the worst of the worst in most of the male characters. Now of course, with this being a feminist show, like most of its critics see it as a bad thing, I feel like I should give a quick look at every single fella that is involved in this show, well those who have a prominent speaking role and determine whether or not there is a handful of good boys or they follow the trend of all men are bad because they are stinky. Anyways, we're just going to go in order of appearance because I like linear things. Don't take that out of context. Yes, when I say every dude, I do mean every dude. Even the ones that have minor roles for one episode, which is exactly the case for Pete's nephew. And to put it bluntly, he's a little shithead. Dude is introduced in the first scene bullying various kids until Tuka swooped in and owned him. Then he becomes a gremlin and cry to Unky Pete to give him what he wants. He is your stereotypical dumb bully kid that is super spoiled and wouldn't last a minute in my grandparents house. He is a kid though, so maybe he'll grow out of it, but I know we'll never see it, so... This might be my best phrase yet. To keep it simple and to the point, if there was a best boy in western animation, Speckle will be in the running for 2022. Hell, the episode focused on him alone is enough to give him the honors of that title. What makes him so special is that his relatability as a man is forefront. He is geeky about certain things that are considered manly since he is an architect, which is interesting because he's not someone that reeks of a manosphere mindset. Yeah, he is very self-conscious in his own right and deals with a lot of people's bullcrap. And I do mean a lot. Look at his complicated relationship with Tuka. Even then, there are times where he does blow a fuse if the issue continues to grow and he expresses his concerns very upfront about it. I mean, look back at Sweet Beak in Season 1 and A Very Speckled Day in Season 3. Though he does have a genuine heart and wants to be there for people he cares about. If you have any animosity towards this dude, then you need to get your vibes checked because something is off. Speckle is very easily an Wanna hear a totally improvised banger? Mayhaps, if you first indulge me my tale of woe. Oh woe, my sweetest Henry. Heart. Not gonna cap. Dapper Dog is my favorite minor character. Him being this flamboyant, poetic, theatric, fashionable character puts him up there in being a gay icon in the animation scene. What makes him great is that he is always eccentric in whatever situation he may find himself in, and that on its own is huge props. He's always someone who is willing to assist and is a perfect color commentator in any sort of action, including leaf raking. Dapper Dog is a gem. Easy. Hey ladies. Not now, Bruce. Can't chat, Bruce. We're trying to chase down some sugar. Ooh. Yeah, uh... Bruce is definitely a character in the show. There's really only one word that describes his characteristics. Horny. A majority of his screen time is essentially him wanting to talk dirty to a majority of the women. He had a fling with Tuka, which from her interactions with him is clearly something she regrets. Though he did have an arc, I guess? From being the complexes freak, to being a homeless freak, to becoming a rich freak. At the end of the day, he is still a major freak that only thinks with his bird meat. He did have that rare occasion where he did give Tuka some good relationship advice, and he's a fun character to see how unhinged he can be. Definitely not the best male character in the series, but he's not the worst either. Middle of the pack for sure. 
My nephew is a perfect angel. He says he found this on a public street turtle. That's right, Unky P.T. So Pastry Pete is basically the show's Andrew Tate. The dude is the king of misogyny and is very open about his opinion on women. Of course, starting off in the series, he was seen as some sort of forbidden lover, but as the season went on, it became clear that he is the definition of a manipulator and will go out of his way to destroy someone if they step out of line. He uses sexual advances to make women dependent on him. If they even try to move on from him and pursue furthering their career as a chef, he will take it as a slight against him and attempt to plot their downfall before they are even able to get off the ground. He makes it clear that he sees women as nothing but objects he can use to stay above water and will take advantage of any scent of vulnerability. He's easily the most hated man in the entire series and for good reason. So while he does play his part in being the main villain, he is certainly a menace to society with his tactics and vengeful nature. Dude is definitely an- Did you get that message I sent? Huh. Haha, <laughs> improving morale. Bye. It's Tuesday. Now it's time to dive into Holland. He is Bertie's first boss within the show. Well, he is definitely a solid guy. While, yes, his attention span is similar to that of a moth, he does seem genuine in trying to be the good boss man. While his attempts may miss the mark at times and he's mainly out of the loop in more ways than one, he does try to be a team player. Of course, with him only being in the first two seasons and not having much to offer, I do say he is one of the better men in the show in a boomer kind of way. So he'll enter the tier as a solid Blah blah, I'm Bertie's dumb annoying co-worker Dirk. I wear too much cologne, I pronounce it especially, and I usually talk over you, but I just realize I'm a stupid asshole. I may get a bit of flack for this, but I think Dirk had the reverse effect happen compared to Pastry Pete. I'm not saying that he is the most redeemed character within the show, obviously, as he still has some negative traits currently. However, he was certainly a lot worse in the beginning. He uses his overconfident nature to take advantage of the space he enters and steal the spotlight of those who actually did the work. Though he does get called out for his shenanigans quite often and does get his fair share of L's. But there is one thing you should take note of is that Dirk is trying to be better at that. More specifically, we see that in the new bird. Even though he was almost sacrificed by an angry mob Tuka created, we can sympathize with him a little when he talks about his issues of expressing his emotions in a healthy manner in season 2's Kyle episode. He's a character that has small arcs to improve his attitude, but obviously has a long way to go to achieve that. The bro is a s- <laughs> oh, There he is! <laughs> Alright, so this one is a character we only see once, but plays an important role when it comes to Tuka and her struggles of being confident while sober. It's funny because Deadly Guy was someone that never received a name in the show but he does give off a lot of good vibes. He was a very patient man, always willing to go with the flow. He even shows some kind of interest to Tuka as well. It was unfortunate that her own nerves got the better of her. They have quite a bit in common with their abnormal ideas, like the meat and cheese in a drawer. His easygoing nature does have a limit as the amount of shenanigans became too much for him because of her trying to push herself away as she wasn't ready for a relationship at the time. While it will always be a wonder of what could have been if they actually became a couple, he certainly is a guy that you can easily see being someone you can enjoy when he is on screen. Even if he might be into plechophilia. Hi! I'm Big Harry Stallion 69. Remember I was the little spoon? You asked me for help? I did? Yes. Everything about him. Yes. In all seriousness, it's kind of funny that I think a lot of the fans forgot about this dude. This man is up there when it comes to one of the nicest men in the show. While he was grieving over his ex-girlfriend breaking up with him, he went out of his way to drive for like four hours to take Tuka to the hospital in Yeast Week. 
Not to mention he grew a good bond with Speckle as well from their interactions in an 8-bit version of Second Life. While he only appeared again in Season 2's The Vibe, he definitely is a treat for the show and is definitely a gem of the guys being featured. So for me, he gets a solid I appreciate you all coming on this trip. For real, you're my inner circle, you're my bro fam, and I trust all of you to be cool, all right? So this is your last chance to leave if you can't handle this shiz. So Gordon is definitely... Uh, let's just say is technically a thug. He is the husband of Speckle's sister, Dottie. He's someone that will always use any sort of event as an opportunity to steal something valuable like a bachelor party in Season 2's Plateau and the wedding in Season 3's Some Birdies Getting Married. He certainly isn't much of a good guy, and I don't think he does nearly enough to say that he could be redeemable outside of marrying Dottie, so... I want to support you while you follow your dreams? I want to build a life with you? And take care of all the housework and childcare while you rise in power? Is this love? Being a self-conscious of Birdie, he was certainly the most stereotypical jock that I have ever witnessed. His interactions with all the characters in the episode about him was incredibly fun and really opened your eyes to dudes being dudes. While the idea of misogyny was very strong and went too far in this episode, his charm and appeal can easily swoon anyone, including myself. His moments were very memorable, and he is the reason the episode Kyle is easily up there to be one of my favorite episodes. While generally his attitude is not very favorable to women, and trying to pan into the bro aesthetic is not the best idea, he is one character that is really strong both figuratively and literally, which I believe deserves a I ran for mayor of Birdtown to lead this city on a bold path forward. And I ran against my twin sister to uphold the values of the past. So Tim is your stereotypical political slime ball. And also the co-mayor with his twin sister, Tamarind Toucan, who are also related to Tuca. Can't really talk about one without the other. But Tim Tam was a thing because the voting ended in a tie, so the two will always get nothing done because the idea of compromising was not in their best interest, and would rather fight the crap out of each other to see what policies get to be pushed. Literally. Yeah, the dude, much like his sister, could care less about the concerns of the people residing in their city, like most politicians, and, while comedic in his beef with Tam, his physical altercations doesn't put him high in the best dude scale. He's definitely a I slaved over a hot oven all day trying to make it look just like my Aunt Tabby. Dang. Thomas is another great husband and a total nerd at that. He is a professional leaf raker, an extremely niche sport that makes sense to literally no one. It was so wholesome to watch. While he does portray the it's my house, I do what I want trope a little in his debut episode, what makes him work is his defense of his favorite pastime because a lot of guys are like that, especially when they're the same status as Thomas is. His relationship with his wife Terry is amazing as the chemistry is strong off the jump. Because at the end of the day, the two are willing to help each other out when needed, even begrudgingly, and the charm of the Tukin Ogberg family is one a lot of people would want to aspire to. Thomas is definitely going to an Hello! Happy, Happy Corpse Week! Hi! So, I do want to say I tried to use the wiki to get a lot of these characters, and it was completely useless. Absolutely 80% was going through memory and flipping through the episodes themselves or having to go to other character pages to look at the relationships of that character to get the guy I needed. I had to do that for Henry and his name was not there in any of the pages. We literally knew his name at the end of season 3's fledging day. Ugh, someone needs to update that thing. Anyways, rant over. Henry screams the fun dad type. There isn't much to him. He is a complete goober and wants to give a positive outlook. He definitely is less flesh compared to his wife Anna, though we do know that he is just like his wife and Birdie. 
he's not the best at communicating his issues or trying his best to avoid depressing topics because of the emotional baggage. He still is a pleasant to see when he does appear in the show, and if they did give him some time to develop as a character, he would have definitely been higher. Though with where he is at, he's only going to get a Good morning, sweetie dukes. Mm -mm. Thanks for the be fast, be friend. Now we're getting into Tuka's current boyfriend, someone who really elevated Tuka as a character. He's a polar opposite of Tuka with his calm and collective demeanor. He also serves as an obstacle for Tuka, and his own issues with alcohol is a major talking point that she originally couldn't handle witnessing. I think it was very sweet to see the amount of care the two have for each other and wanting to deal with their own issues. His other notable relationship is with Speckle, who honestly would see Figgy as a close friend of his that actually lives close by, unlike Big Harry Stallion 69. Still love you, brother. But it's clear that Figgy was going to be here for the long haul if this series had continued and was a great welcome to continue the development for Tuka as a character and is going to be the second man to enter Oh Tuka, you did it! You've trained my wildest duck! Oh man, this duck is gonna make me so much money! So, Larry did technically debut in Kyle, but he was more of a background character in that episode but he became much more fleshed out in Season 3 when he ended up being Tuka's latest boss. He's a man that loves to take a lot of risks, being able to pull all his eggs into one basket. Seeing the amount of charisma Tuka brings to the table as a tour guide, he was very willing to skyrocket her with various promotions, and take out unnecessary loans to expand the business, all because of her overall talent. While he is very outgoing and matches Tuka's personality as well, his decisions are mainly based on money, as he wants to make every opportunity within his business to make the most money possible. Which is why he is so willing to give his best employees so much promotions and pressure. Well, when it comes to Ducky and her abrasive behavior, he was willing to let her go or put her down because of the risk of the duck boat destroying the property and people. He's definitely someone that doesn't show care about others and takes a lot of high risks for high rewards, though a decent character that is certainly fun to watch, but plays the capitalist game no matter how it affects his employees. Definitely a b Uh, yeah, I was thinking cookies that are triangles and they come in one flavor. Cookie. Now we get into the second most flamboyant man within the show in Jamie, a character I perceive to be in his mid-twenties. He's a guy that is a co-worker of Birdie in Winter Snacks and doesn't say too much during his screen time, though when he does speak it can get pretty wild and unhinged in his opinion. While he does get to Birdie at times, He's generally a decent guy that doesn't overstay his presence, and his relaxed attitude can be seen as more of a surplus. Solid. Well, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> you got the check, right? Oh, leaving my man to pick up the tab. I guess feminism has its limits. Now, if Pastry Pete was considered the Andrew Tate of this world, Cliff would have to be the Aiden Ross. Now, I did talk about him extensively in the Very Speckled Day review I did a while back. He was seen as the reliable ear to speckle when a situation at his job was getting worse and not finding any sort of comfort in other avenues. His true colors began to show when Bernie met him for the first time. He's a lot more upfront with his misogyny and easily becomes one of the worst men in the show alone. With his incel-like behavior when he compares women to his own mom and would have sexual advances to a female body mannequin. So with all that, Cliff would be hanging with Pete in the- Look Anna, there's something I never got to say to you all those years ago before you married Henry. Well, you let me do you in the ass. Okay, so there's not much to him. He's a former love interest of Anna that wanted to get deep down in some song thrush booty, as it was his dying wish. 
it's pretty bold for him to try and get his last shot at a woman who is married and I thought it was absolutely hilarious and how incredibly horny he was. Who would have thought that being on your last days will enrage your boner? Obviously, even as a dying man, I think these tactics, as hilarious as they are, definitely knocks him down a couple of pegs. Dude is a Carry you old ice bitch, it's good to see you. Thanks for making me come in on a freaking Sunday. You love an emergency. It makes you feel so important. <laughs> I sure am. Finally, we have Dr. Mole, who shows up in the series finale to help Tuka deal with her serious cramping from the growth. He is very witty with his commentary, and his micro jokes are top tier. I think him really finding the discoveries of Tuka's sensitive area and seeing it as an eye-opening experience helps him appreciate a woman's body. He decided to stay in Tuka's body because of that experience and it made him feel satisfied. Who would have thought a micro mole would be inside a woman far longer than any of you losers watching now? Slash J, I love you all. But generally a solid character that definitely takes his job seriously and his appreciation for the body, while weird, is somewhat wholesome. So I think from the initial grading, a lot of the guys are actually pretty decent and overall fun to witness interact. Now obviously this is a subjective list, but I think the notion of all the guys being garbage is very clearly not true. While most of these guys only appear in a handful of episodes, a lot of them are very memorable in their own right. Even the guys considered in the lower tier are very important and are necessary to reflect certain critiques that we as men need to improve on. I think the show's handling of the male counterparts were solid and deserves a lot of credit for being a feminist show. And we shouldn't turn the other cheek for a show that is focused on the female demographic on how it interprets the men within it. It's good to keep an open mind and recognize while, well, yes, when looking at equality between both genders, we have to recognize the flaws between both. Which the show does. So, yeah. Stop with this men are barely developed narrative. <laughs>